Setting up the script game interface for Call of Duty Advanced Warfare is just as simple as setting up an ordinary game pack. When you first open SGI, you'll be in the shot mode menu where you'll be able to choose between three different shot types. All these mods are disabled by default. To activate a mod, you'll simply click the switch to on. If you choose to, you'll also be able to choose the amount of time to wait before performing your drop shot, or choose to drop shot only whenever you're aiming down sights. In this menu, you are also able to activate the bunny jump mod, which could be turned off and on in-game by holding the extra input 6 and pressing the forward button. You are also able to set the time to go prone when you press the extra input 5. If you are unsure of what any of the mods do, please see the descriptions tab. Here you will find an explanation of what each of the mods do, as well as instructions of how to toggle each of the mods off and on while in-game. You are also able to read over all of the perk descriptions by going to the Perks tab and clicking on the picture of the perk. With SGI, you are also able to see a picture of all the prestige emblems by clicking its tab. In the Sensitivity ADS tab, you are able to increase the sensitivity when you are aiming down your sights. You are also able to add a time to wait before changing the sensitivity. We have the option to add the delay to this mod so you will have enough time to lock onto your target for a precise aim before firing. You are also able to change the ADS mode to toggle, so you will press the button once to aim, then press it once again to stop aiming. The double tap dash mod is always enabled by default. If you wish to remove this mod, please tick its box. This mod allows you to dash in the direction of your choice by double tapping your movement buttons. In the rapid fire tab, you are able to activate this mod by switching its button to on, or if you are in game, you will be able to toggle this mod off and on using the button you have set for extra input too. If you are using rapid fire, you have the option to set a custom rate of fire. You are able to fine tune your rapid fire speed using decimals for extra precise timing. If you are using an assault rifle with rapid fire, you will need to select it from the drop down menu and attach the foregrip to your weapon. Dual wielding weapons is a very powerful setup. The only downside is you are pulling on both the left and right triggers when firing, making aiming much more difficult. When the dual easy mod is turned on, pulling the right trigger will shoot both weapons. You are also able to set a custom rate of fire, allowing rapid fire on both weapons using one trigger. If you choose to use the rapid fire with this mod, please make sure your regular rapid fire is disabled in the previous tab. In the burst fire tab, you are able to turn automatic weapons into burst fire weapons. Combining burst fire with rapid fire will give you an automatic burst. In the burst fire options tab, you are able to choose if your weapons will go into full auto mode or if it will constantly burst when holding the trigger down. You are also able to choose the amount of time between bursts for a fully customizable experience. After setting your burst fire options, choose the tab for the type of weapon you are using, turn the mod on, select your weapon, and then select the amount of rounds per burst. In the quick scope hold breath tab, you are able to activate the quick scope and auto breath mods. Using the quick scope, you will fire a shot when you release the aim button, allowing you to perform quick scopes, drag scopes, and hard scopes. This mod can be turned off and on in-game using your extra input 7. When hold breath is activated, you will hold your breath when you are looking down your scope, preventing you from having to hold the button yourself. In the Buttons Layout tab, you'll see a list of commands to turn your mods off and on while in-game using your extra input buttons. You'll need to select the controller for the type of console you are using before remapping any buttons. Once your controller is set, You'll need to select your buttons layout from the drop down menu or create a custom mapping using the drop down menus on the left. In the quick melee tab, you're able to set the amount of time you will stay in the melee animation. Normally, this animation takes about 1100 milliseconds. The double jump dash mod is always activated by default. This mod will allow you to dash forwards whenever you perform a double jump. 
Just flick the switch off if you do not wish to use this. Once you have finished setting your mods and mappings, you will be in the code display tab. If you are happy with your settings, you will need to click the copy script button in the top left corner of your screen. You will then click OK and open GTuner. Once in GTuner, you will need to click the Compiler tab located at the bottom of your screen. Once in the Compiler tab, you will need to create a new GPC script by clicking its button at the top left of your screen. You will now need to erase everything that is typed in the script and paste the code from SGI. After pasting your code, you will want to compile the script to check for any errors. You can do this either by pressing the F7 key or clicking the compile button at the top of your screen. After making sure there are no errors, you'll need to open the MaxMDI plugin and make sure you are using the correct layout. You will then need to look under the layout options and select load GPC script. This will allow you to use the mods you selected earlier and when you are ready to play, just click the Enter Capture Mode button. 